is part two. We've got a really exciting episode for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. We're going to be starting out with our first question for the segment. Uh, guys, some people have been accusing Blizzard of using a lot of balance updates as band-aids to cover up an inherent flaw in the gameplay of StarCraft II. Last week, we discussed changes in the legacy of the Void economy. So, as an economic RTS, how much impact do drastic overhauls, like the one in Legacy of the Void, affect gameplay? And could this be the flaw that the community is referring to? Um, so, I'm actually one of those people that uh, feels that Blizzard is using um, these balance updates as band-aids. Um, just the way that they're going about them. Not necessarily that balance updates are band-aids, but... Um, yeah, just their approach, right? It doesn't feel like they're addressing the core issues within the game and are instead trying to find ways to work around them. And I think that's the key frustration that a lot of people are feeling and are experiencing within the game. And again, like that goes back to um, you know StarCraft II player base and its mm -hmm. relevancy, right? If people feel like the developer is not addressing problems with the game, why would they continue to play that game, you know, especially if they're not having fun and they're finding it way too demanding and, and so on and so forth. I could not agree with that more. Yeah, I, I agree as well. I think they're doing a lot of things with the Mothership Core that they really should have uh, finished up back in Heart of the Swarm. Mm -hmm. The Mothership Core is a terrible unit. I, I'm pretty sure if they remove the Mothership Core and they just balance part off early, early game around it, the game would be perfectly fine. But now they're adding it to the pylon. And they're changing. They're changing it up, everything up, and um, it's just getting worse with every single patch. Now, now Paralysis are piling rushing Terrans everywhere. Terran has to wall in, make a bunker preemptively, and it's really frustrating. Same thing with the water mine and and um and the disruptor. These these are really these are really bad units that they've added mm -hmm. that they've added since Heart of the Swarm and uh, the disruptor the new unit. And uh, there's been, there've been a lot of complaints with them. I think. And um, uh, people in general just don't like these units. I think Blizzard likes the Wood of Mine because they, they think uh, a lot of big explosions are cool for esports or whatever their logic is for that. Um, but really, it's it's a terribly designed unit. It, it punishes the it punishes the attacker way more than it punishes it, it, I mean, it punishes the defender way more than, than the attack attacker because they're so cheap. Mm -hmm. and on top on top of that, they're they're really just. There, that like the Woodmine itself is a band-aid fix for the meta buff in Heart of the Swarm. Right. We, we we would have Marine Tank, which is a really a, a much better a, a much better uh, style, a much more fun to fun to watch, a uh, uh, less frustrating style to deal with mm -hmm. in TZ. But instead, they added also they added fun to play. Yeah, it's way more fun to play because there's the positioning aspect of it. Woodmine, yeah. you just you just run up and you burrow and run in positions and you hope for the best. And if they don't, and if they don't trigger off at the right spots, then you lose the engagement. Mm -hmm. It's really frustrating for both sides. And I think they should have dealt with that a long time ago. But they're, they're just trying to work around it. They're giving the Buddha mind a new role or or whatnot, and they're and they think it's a completely fine unit. When really they should throw out all those really bad units and um and and make the current units much better or add new units. That's that's. I my think the opinion. only good design that's come out of the two expansions has been the help at. And even then, they kind of mucked it up by making it like quasi biological, which is strange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Hellbat, Hellbat is one of the one of the worst units as well because if you think about Mech in general, if you think about all the hate against Mech, it it stems on the one A unit, and Tank isn't a one A unit that much because you have to siege. Thor is a one A unit, I agree, and they they they've been they need to fix that and replace that with the Cyclone because of various reasons. Um, but the Hellbat is the main one A unit. It literally walks and attacks. And it's at like point near point blank range. Mm -hmm. Here's why I fundamentally disagree with that because the Hellbat is not its own like compartmentalized unit, right? It's kind of like it's an upgrade from the Hellion, and the Hellion has a lot of harassment potential. So when you talk about the Hellbat, you're talking about the Hellion as well, as as a combined role. So it, the Hellbat is essentially an upgrade for the Hellion that gives it more options in terms of how you can use the unit. But I do agree that the way that they implemented the Hellbat and its current like balanced stats feels clunky, um, and it isn't as great as it could possibly be. I think the Hellion's a great unit. It's a great design unit. It, it forces the Terran to micro. It forces the, the opposition to micro. 
Um, the Hellbat only forces one side of micro, and that's that's what the entire problem with mech is. People don't like microing against someone who doesn't micro. They like seeing action from both sides. They like seeing their opponent um, do things to beat them, and not just siege their tanks and one uh, A. Um, I think I think they can cover up the fact that Hellions aren't that great in the late game with like an, a really a really simple remedy if they just like this for the cyclone which which made it better against their air units and stuff they can easily fix that up i think hellbat is a really uh, it's it's just a pointless unit it doesn't the hellion can pretty pretty the easily hellbat is actually like a really important unit like for the mech composition it's half no, no, the reason why mech is even viable uh, no, I, agree, I feel like the problem with agree. the Hellbat is a lot like what you're saying. You can just A move with it and it just does a ton of damage. I don't think that should be right. I feel like the Hellbat should have some clear weaknesses. Um, you know, like where you wouldn't want to just have Hellbats and be able to A move them because they should be able to just get killed that way. They should be accompanied by some greater composition. And then they're used more as a meat shield in order to do things like protect your siege tanks and so on and so forth. Um, no, but we don't I, see it I, in that role, right? We see it like where you have Hellbat rushes and mm -hmm. Hellbat drops and just things where they're just overpowering. And that's yeah, what I that's... mean when I say Blizzard didn't implement it like completely properly in terms of balance. But the concept is probably like the only good one, I feel, if they were to readjust really... it in the way that I'm talking about. No, yeah, I completely agree. The Hellbat's a really core unit for mech. But I'm saying they can readjust the Hellion to fit the role that the Hellbat currently accompanies. And then and then you can see mech microing against Roach Hydra or against Bio. You can see that. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, And and if you think about it... the Hellion. Think, <laughs> the Hellbat. So the Hellion still has its, like, squishiness and its kiting and, like, positioning and all of that and harassment. And I feel like the Hellbat should just be, like, you know, when you want to bring the Hellions into your core mech composition, just to be a, like a wall for your siege tanks, mm -hmm. right? Because you need, need that, otherwise your siege tanks just get overrun. Um, so that's what the Hellbat should be. And then when you want to break them off, the Hellion should be what's ideal. But that's not the case right now. Um, if you look back to Wings Liberty mech, um, mech was definitely viable, but they they had this this had they had this whole thing where uh, you had four upgrades, you had four you had four upgrades for mech. So uh, you, you can either go ground mech or air mech, and an MVP uh, went for an air mech style uh, a couple of games. You probably saw him against Squirtle. Uh, Squirtle. Um, I think mech definitely uh, would have been viable in Wings Liberty if they just uh, readjusted a, a couple of things like they, they did in HOTS. I think they got the main idea for buffing mech uh, back from that game in um, uh, 2013 WCS Season 2, uh, that best of three between Innovation and Tasia, Newkirk Precinct, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think that was the name of it. There was a New yeah, York Precinct like, and a New York like, District. There was like yeah. two different maps, but I, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I think that's that's where they got the whole idea of, of making Mech a thing for Terran. Because that was like one of the best games of, of Heart of the Swarm. And, but one of the best games of the past two years. And that, that happened like right after Heart of the Swarm came out. So I think it could have definitely worked in Wings with only Hellions. I think Hellions can, given a late, can be given a late game role, mm -hmm. uh, just like Cyclones uh, have an upgrade for um, after getting after you get the fusion core, they can have something really similar with the Hellion to make it fit the role the Hellbat does. And and you're right, it, it's a squishy unit, so you can micro it. It can it can have the same purpose as a Hellbat, but then at the same time you can adjust it to that it, the micro awards do. You can line you can line up Roach Hydra to the sides, just like Colossus does, just like Colossus do. They're a side to side splash attack. And you can you can roar the mech player with micro, and you can punish the mech player from one aing into yeah, rotation. I'm, I'm just saying that the Hellbat like is like the late well, well should be the late game option of the Hellion, right? If that makes sense. I'm perfectly like okay with the Hellion or the slash the Hellbat being, or really just the Hellbat being a not, you know, easy to master, no skill unit in a sense. Oh, it's not in interesting to watch micro. Well, that's all right. You know, if it's there's Ooh. a certain purpose, maybe with the liberators, that's the micro that Terrans are focusing on. There's always things to, uh, to other things to do, and that's the reason why StarCraft is so hard. And um, especially with those things becoming more of the focus, micro and the, in, in the, the engages, it's you almost need some units to to be on autopilot so then you can yeah. you can focus on the other important really really important things and then um you know so it, the issue arises when somebody 
just masses one specific unit that's easy to easy to master, easy to win kind of thing. Like uh, yeah, and that's like exactly what I'm saying. Like it's like the Hellbat pushes against yeah, Zerg. Sometimes you can just straight up win uh, if you ca- if you catch them because if they don't have bantlings or roaches. So so yeah, I mean sometimes that's an issue, but I'm also okay with those kind of units being in the game. Um, so. And, and and with the widow mine, I think there it does also require a lot of counter skill, and, and knowing where they are, which means you got to really pay attention more to your army, which is so tough. But thankfully, in Legacy of the Void, it's not as tough, and so I think widow mines are fine. Uh, I think it does make good gameplay, just also sometimes can make bad gameplay. So um, there's it's not the best design unit but you guys are right in the sense that um, design needs to be inter- entertaining and a, a counter on each side so then it's uh, you know rather than just a a move kind of thing but and, and that and that happens so uh, I think we're we're, we're alright but and, and I think it'll be a little bit better with Legacy of the Void and you know micro Those yeah kind of to units. your point like not every single unit necessarily needs to be like a high micro counterplay sort of unit but the ones that aren't can't just be like mass produced and a moved because then you ruin all the strategy of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there needs to be some sort of balance within there, and that's what I'm kind of saying with the Hellbat is if they implemented it properly, where you couldn't just do like two base Hellbat timings or, or just do Hellbat drops and like win games, mm-hmm. right? Like there should be a reasonable ability to just destroy them if they're just on their own. Um, so ex- I really love. Like, you know, what you're bringing up, it, it's almost like the role of the century right now, like I see the void. People aren't aren't massing them anymore because there's essentially, not in real time, you, you, there's a Red Bull game where, where a Protoss team actually went seven or so in se- seven or so centuries, and the guy didn't have a Ravager army composition. So force fields actually were just as good <laughs> and, and actually won. And so the thing is, is that centuries still have its place, well, you can't mass them without, and, and and then oh shoot, it failed, but I kept my sentry safe, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna pull back, take a third, and I'll still be okay. And that happens a lot in uh, in in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, more in Heart of the Swarm because they can teleport home. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, what happens now though, if they make those kind of seven sentries and they go home, there's actually a counter composition that you're oh wow, what you're getting that? I'm just going to build a bunch of ravagers and I'm going to push you, and those force fields won't be nearly as an issue as much of an issue. And so what you're getting at is yes, yeah, somebody masses hellbats. It, it needs to be a slow transition to the point where they leave themselves open to a potential counter composition push, and that's what makes it in a sense more all in. And the problem right now is that that kind of sent or not now, but in Wings Heart of the Swarm is those kinds of sentry things are just that and a little bit with Hellbats. And so uh, I think Legacy of the Void helps with the, um, you know, not the Hellbat version, but uh, but who knows? I mean, things can be all in still for Terran because they can't take as many bases, and with the mule change, I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll see. Once it really does le- reach late game, Zerg has such better late game uh, right now in first Terran, so if you can just survive, that's good. <laughs> so it almost... Maybe motiv- motivates those Terrans to do those move kind of pushes, but at the same time, as a Zerg, you just—it's all about survive right now. Survive, 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 and you'll definitely get to the late game and then win. So, so yeah, um, you know, I'm all right with even those styles. The kind of cheeses or oh, what it is? Why is this in the game? Kind of instances are really the a lot of you know just coin flips. You can scout the Hellbat all in, and so there's a strat, there's the there's strength there and. Or there's a there's a there is in a sense a counter you scout it, but even th- these days you scout it and they could just play a little macro version of it. And I think Legacy of the Void makes it a little bit harder, and um, and so I don't know. The, I'm, okay. I, I don't want to ramble too hard. You're so. fine. You're fine. Um, you guys are actually discussing yeah. a lot of the units and the changes in Legacy of the Void. So I've got a couple yeah. of questions that kind of revolve around units. We'll finish up this segment and go into the next segment with just things about units, okay? Um, so I can't believe I'm actually going to say this, but according to Blizzard, Corruptors' place in the game have been replaced by Swarm Hosts. What they're trying to say is that the Corruptor's siege capacity overlaps with the changes to the Swarm Hosts, and in the community feedbacks threads, 
they were saying that Swarm Host is looking like it's in a cool and unique spot, and they don't want to change it. So they're talking about changing the Corruptor. What changes would you, you guys like to see? Um, I never really used the Corruptor. <laughs> and with the, I've always been a Muta guy, and I've always felt confident in that. Mm -hmm. Corruptor definitely has a lot of strengths right now because it also kind of fills a little bit of the role of the Muta as well because they're much better defensive units. And as we're talking about with Zerg right now, getting to the late game is really important. So that actually feeds to that same synergy. Mm -hmm. And then you also, once you do hold defensive, 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 and they actually come and hit you, typically your corruptors will be the thing that lives, the, the things that live oftentimes. So you'll have this corruptor army and you'll be remaking a ground army and while they're remaking stuff, you can actually kill a load of tons, just tons of buildings and mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, two bases worth of you know, planetaries or something that are really strong against those things because even mass repair sometimes can't stop mass corruptor. To, so I, I, I'm okay with them removing the ability. Mm -hmm. I think the ability... I, I didn't really like the ability anyway, and I kind of foresaw it getting removed. It was, in a sense, somewhat OP, a tough to balance. I'm perfectly okay with what they're actually proposing, which is some kind of uh, enemy unit uh, ability that you can cast on enemy unit, just like the 20%, but a little bit better, uh, that does direct damage, I believe. That that's what they're doing. And I think that's good, because doing the building thing, was almost like Muto Harass, and, but a better defensive version. And because defense is just totally the meta right now, I mean, you just, people, a lot of people are going Corruptor. And so, so something that, hey, I'm going defensive, and if I can use them and defend your push, I'm not going to go able to go right across the map and just win with these Corruptors. But, um, you know, they won't be completely worthless if they happen to be, you know, just the only thing that lives in your army. So, 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 so yeah, they're no longer paperweights if they can do damage to units as well. And I think doing okay. damage to units is more important than buildings. All right. So, okay, boss Taryn. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I honestly didn't like any any form of uh, swarm modes. I always thought they kind of lack the swarm, mm -hmm. where I could never really kill that Raven Viking BC flock, or I could never really kill that Protoss uh, Tempest army. But yeah, I like I like how they're uh, kind of um, changing it up and giving Corruptor a new role since they could never be that giant uh, army like Terran and Protoss has. Mm -hmm. Okay, Caustic. So Corruptors and Swarm Hosts. I feel like these are two really great examples of uh, that previous topic that we were talking about with uh, flawed gameplay. So the Corruptor, Blizzard is still struggling to find a way to make the Corruptor like an interesting unit beyond just basic anti-air ave move. And the swarm host was so fundamentally broken that they had to completely redesign the unit. And now, with the way that they've redesigned both these units, they're seeing overlap with what they want to do with them. So, yeah. Um, I feel like this is like a very like clean-cut case of where Blizzard's just like, uh, how do we design this game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn so, you, I mean, David Kim. As, yeah, as far as like what I would like to see, honestly, I'm in the same boat as Boss. I've never really liked the Swarm Host in any way, shape, or form. Um, even their current version is weird. Um, I know Blizzard's saying that they like it, but the idea that they're just like the siege unit that completely ignores terrain, mm -hmm. right? Blizzard's talking about wanting to have more unique and interesting maps, but they keep making unit designs that just ignore the terrain completely, mm -hmm. right? To the tune where, like, Deadwing was an actual ladder map. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's like, you know, the map maker, like, I know the guy, uh, um, a fantastic fellow. Mm -hmm. I just really didn't like that map in particular. Um, it was... You're very bland. Um, you know, I you got your three, four bases in your corner, and everything else is just like a big flat plane, right? Mm -hmm. Like very little um, uniqueness uh, to what the map can do. But it plays out well for the way that Blizzard's been designing the game. Those are some really interesting opinions. I personally liked the original Corruptor. Don't like don't like anything to do with this current version at all. As a Zerg player, even like, like sending your whole army of leftover corruptors to go wreak havoc on 
on his base, well, your base is getting destroyed as well. So, I mean, even that just doesn't feel very pretty. So I don't care what they do. I just want them to do something. But that said, guys, we are going to be moving into part three after a five-minute break if you're watching this live. Otherwise, on YouTube, just make sure you hit that next little uh, part three button. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Big thank you to our sponsor, Zelos Web. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much, and have a great day.